wonderful crowd here it is very nice pristine surroundings of uh, the goa university uh, you know greenery as you call it uh, after this monsoon so everything is really green nice to see you all here i wish to congratulate the uh, discipline of english for having uh, organized this i think poetry is something which is very important in our lives uh it uh, this is why we are here is to use the language which we are learning in the most creative way and i think that is uh, very important uh they say anyone and everyone can be a poet you agree let's see poetry is joy poetry is fun poetry has meaning and sometimes has the pun poetry has rhythm poetry has rhyme they both give it flavor like parsley sage rosemary and thyme <laughs> poetry is for and by the homesick for and by lovers and also the love sick it said that poetry is truer than history because it is both his story and her story thank you very much so uh i just spend these lines while i was having my lunch so i guess i am a poet and i never knew it thank you so much ma'am you definitely are a poet um i request everybody to gather around for a photograph first so we'll first have the photograph and then we'll uh, move on to the next Okay so some of you guys can sit down some of you all can come up here and stand take a place Let's stand here pictures now Ma'am sir Ma'am sir Ma'am sir Ma'am sir
Settle down, guys. The moon. The more we wait for something, it gets very boring. So, without waiting any much, lose yourself on the land of poetry, and get ready. for some pure poetry the words that will fall upon our ears i am ready to enjoy this session of poetry yes so here i call upon the first poet karina sikwera who will be presenting her poet in english please have a big round of applause so hey there everyone poetry ha huh? okay poetry um some may find it boring others a chore but today let me dive into a poem called pure poetry which will take us on an adventure to explore the joys and wonders of the written world so here i go once upon a time in a realm made of rhyme where words danced and played but never lost their prime pure poetry it was called so enchantingly bright with stanzas and metaphors it took us to new heights the first line hit like a like a punch line done right poetry oh poetry you're such a delight words so clever they made the world feel light and as the reader chuckled a bond was formed in flight with puns and wits our faces cracked wide imagery painted vividly like a roller coaster ride the poet's clever mind captured life's essence so precise that each verse captured moments like pixels in a device similes metaphors and personifications oh my describing emotions in a way that made us sigh the poet's heart poured out once so hidden and still Pure poetry had the power and the incredible skill from love and loss to nature's gentlest touch every emotion presented with a humorously light clutch laughter echoed through pages joy filling every line pure poetry revealed life secrets oh so fine but wait there's more a twist for the wise in every stanza they hid a clever disguise deep within the humor profound meanings unveiled pure poetry's brilliance forever prevailed 
Rhythm and rhyme took center stage as the poet transported us to a magical age. Pure poetry danced and laughed, never missing a beat. Its lyrical melodies, a mesmerizing feat. Through clever wordplay and unpredictability, pure poetry entranced, embracing sensibility. The poet's raw talent shone through every verse, provoking thought and delightful mirth. So let's honor and adore and have pure poetry explode. Creative, hilarious, with a touch of the heart, poetry can truly be a remarkable work of art. So keep your pens dancing and those pages turning. For in the world of words, magic definitely awaits. Thank you. Those are, truly, those are truly mesmerizing words by Karina. So please, one more time, just to energize yourself, clap louder. Thank you so much. Well, the next pure poetry or the words, magic of the words, we have among us, Lizanne Montero. Please have a big round of applause. Hello. Um, so my poem is um, it's a little sad, but I wrote it at um, one of the lowest points in my life, actually. So please bear with me. Okay. So it's titled as uh, the Museum of Scars. You can hear me, right? Okay. In the Museum of Scars, I wander alone lost in the corridors of a mind overthrown, trapped in labyrinths, a cruel design, seeking escape from life's grand decline. My thoughts like a tempest whirl and confuse, a maddening storm I desperately try to diffuse, trading insanity for the promise of bliss, yearning for solace in a world amiss. <coughs> In logic's icy shroud, I cloak my fears, but anxiety's claws persist, rel relentless and severe. Uneases icy breath, a constant ache, as I navigate a chaotic world lost in a dark embrace. Like a corpse in a tomb of despair, my identity lies buried within sheets of dirt, a burden to bear. Silent screams are held tight in my chest, a hushed in a voice whispers, Shh, we're not done yet. And so the battle persists, a blank space in my head, a relentless abyss. Growing with intensity, cataclysmic and stark, a void within, devouring the spark. In cages of sorrow, I dwell in a beast's possession, asleep among thorny roses, scars gracing my skin like a silent confession. What does it take, I ask, to survive? Beauty or strife? Pain or pleasure? A haunting domain, the Museum of Scars, is a home to unseen exhibits, untold tales of pain. Yet in the dim light, there's a flicker of hope, a glimmer of strength, where fear can do nothing but cope. For survival, I've learned, is a gradual climb through the veil of obscurity and shadows one step at a time. And though darkness may linger, I'll continue to strive. For survival is more than just staying alive. Thank you. Very rightly said by the gent, survival is more. And survival is in incomplete without poetry, I feel. So next we have among us, let me announce this in Marathi. Purchi Kovetriya hai, Saili Garde. Eta zordar tada hodya. Namaskar, good afternoon. I'll be presenting a Marathi poem. This poem speaks praises of how rich the Marathi language is. Dating right from Santa Gnandev till Gnanpet Awardee winner, Awardee Viva Shirvadkar, who writes with the pen name Kusumagraj. 
it will show how the marathi language is decorated with poetic effects and feeling marathi like other language has so many styles of writing poetry from which i chose ov that is a form or a type to frame this poem so now i'll be presenting the poem majha ma ki chi thora ve गुण गाई माय बोली पुढे टाकण्या पाहुले पिढी सच्च हो जाहली माय मराठी आकाशी ध्वज विजयाचा हासे पैज अमृताची म्हणे वाणी ज्ञानी व देवाचे भाषा खुलते फुलते गंध दर वळे दुरी गाथा तुको बाची सांगे सेवे सुमने शब्दांची युगे लोटली ही जरी अंत भाषे कधी नसे शब्द धनांची या माळे हे कुसुमाग्रज लाभे सुर छेडी तर माय मराठीची गाणी तिस अलंकार साजे दिसे भाषा ही सुशोभी गोडी बोलीची लागली ओढ अंतरी ही भासे देणे भाषेने दिधले आम्हा समृद्धीचे देणे देणे भाषेने दिधले आम्हा समृद्धीचे देणे धन्यवाद थँक यू थँक यू मॅम टू कॉम्प्लिमेंट दिस पोम आय वुड लाईक टू कॉम्प्लिमेंट हर इन मराठी एकदमच भारी सो वी हॅव नेक्स्ट अमॉंग अस स्टेला दसोजा शील बी रिसाइटिंग अर पोएम इन इंग्लिश प्लीज हॅव अ बिग राउंड ऑफ अप्लॉज लेट द क्लॅप साउंड लेट इट बी लाउड कम ऑन यू आर एनर्जेटिक let me continue on the note that lizen left uh, so to add to it life is not all about happiness but we do have moments of extreme sadness and where we really feel that there's no hope for another day but in those moments we remind ourselves and we constantly speak to ourselves to be positive so this poem is something that um, i wrote i wrote this poem about something that I, i've been through uh, through a phase wherein i did not really uh, feel like uh, there was anything good going to happen but yeah i would remind myself and i'm glad that i did uh, so the title of my poem is labyrinth within what dost thou needest o this soul of mine why art thou so troubled and weary every minute seems to never pass away in a labyrinth of nothingness is where i feel i am the more i walk the less i feel i have traveled in this vast expanse of nothingness if for a moment i stop to catch my breath it feels like time has already slipped off from my hands what am i to do who am i to ask i feel so lost with these eerie thoughts of mine locked and shackled in this prison of abyss so far that even light can't reach but oh what's even harder is to wake up holding on to the hem of that little sunlight which perhaps is just an illusion and to expect some change when all that awaits is yet another endless dark day shadows lurking around on every corner waiting to engulf the tiny flame that's left to pull me back where warmth is not even remembered i want to escape this maze but what do i do no matter how loud i scream beyond myself it doesn't go Can I take this smiling mask off myself and release the beast within? How long am I to tame this storm inside? I want to scream and shout till all the walls come crumbling down. My heart only then thou will be still. Will this ever happen or is this just another one of my dreams? I just want to be me. Is this way too much of me to ask? O oh my soul, tarry on a little longer. some day somewhere you will be you and does the labyrinth within will finally come to an end thank you
will our souls were really pleased with this poem. And next we have as Eshika Rocha. Please have a big round of applause. Hello everyone. I hope you all are having a great time. And the poem that I'm going to present is titled as In the Meadow. In the meadow, bare feet, breathless, sprinting through the grass, yelling with joy and arms intertwined, we danced our youth out. Securing our ecstasy from the berating world, we found our place in the meadow where day long we snuggled. Regaining our peace with the nature of ourselves, we held on to each other, teaching to accept and let go of things that we have no control of. Our smiles did not rely on the surroundings after all. Our words did not necessarily agree with others' beliefs. Nor did our thoughts face doubt anymore. We believed in each other because we make us believe in ourselves. We trust our togetherness. We trust our bond. For our union against the world ends our struggle of trying to be who we do not wish to be. Our hearts understand the complexity and the importance of one another's feelings. We make ourselves better. We push each other to a calm state. So I wonder, why not call her my soulmate? Thank you. Wonderful poem, Ishika. And the next poet is Kanaka Desai. From part one English, he'll be reciting the poem in English. Okay, so hello everyone. I am Kanaka Desai and my poem is about poetry or more like about creating poetry. And uh, I think, I hope it is relatable to anyone who has written or tried to write a poem at one point or the other. And uh, okay, so there's, the, I don't know if uh, anyone is like actually for that, but there's this myth that writers like writing lists. So here's one wherein I mixed poetry with a list. So it is titled Behind the Scenes of Making Poetry. One, an empty mess vessel which makes all the noise of silence, filled with bits and pieces of chores that everyone tells you just as you sit down to write. Five weeks of self-doubt, having a million ideas in the head, followed by an ultra-enthusiastic week with a writer's blocked brain. Ten hundred glasses of overthinking poured into the mixture, asking to be stirred at the odd hours of 3 a.m., 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., followed by a brainwavish idea striking the head at 3.57 a.m. just to be forgotten at the three next minute. A few million ideas which never seem good enough, and a whole journey of empathy that never runs out. Followed by frustration and procrastination to tell you that forces stronger than the will to write poetry exist. Random outbursts of creativity and eureka moments of ideas in places where you can't write it down. The bathroom being poetry's favorite. Constant good nature jokes on your lack of words to express the beauty and this and more is what constitutes to behind the scenes of making a poem turn into poetry. Thank you. Next we have is Rosai Dias. Hello everyone, my name is Rosai Dias and uh, I'm going to be presenting uh, a poem named Uproot. So, Here's to all the overthinkers like me. <laughs> so, uproot. From the root, the thought that I thought, seemingly in a great pot, but viewing it was rot. As I overthink the thought, you see, the thought seemed very much like a prop, dressing itself with a very good sort. While growing, it seemed very well brought, but it wasn't, you know, a well thought. It was a thought showing up as an appealing seed that I first didn't realize as it was a teen. But as it grew, it turned into being a weed. 
As I thought and more I thought, it grew a lot. Standing in there, it was a lot. Though I couldn't stop planting a bed such a sort. But how long would it go, I thought. And if it did, it would clearly make a deed. Deed which could ruin my introspection, leading to a disastrous feel. Therefore, necessary I feel, making sure to keep the seedlings clear out of weeds. Thank you. Thank you, Rosai. We have been listening to poems in English and Marathi. Then the Konkani lovers are like, I'm to Konkani Pere. So now we call upon Lindsay to recite poem in Konkani. So we have Konkani Mogana Kadir, Konkani Ji poem, Icon Gyat. Netan Tayozani, come on. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lindsay. And um, as Sai has announced, I've written my poem in uh, Romi Konkani, in fact, a script which I think should require or needs more recognition and appreciation. So uh, my title is um, Tempa Pormone Matya Kurpone. So it's basically uh, about keeping up with the changing times. And to those who don't understand Konkani, I'm really sorry. And uh, so yeah, it sounds something like, like this. Zaun Sudarop Sansarache, Zait Veta Bodlop Munshache. Watsun Niyar Lar Jivit Adlanche, Dista Antor, Tanche, and Yamche Mode. Tore Sogling, Godling Koshe. Shikop Kota Bodlop Munshacha Jivitache. Te Naslar Adunik Kalar to Aidon Ritte. Tempa Pormone Zor Tumbodolna. Chintla Tuve, Falla to Zofudar Kite. Gele this atule ani bitule kaneche. Aile this kokko melon ani ril sanche. Gele this gora bair ista wangda kayarpache. Aile this Netflix and chill kurpache. Gele this sancheche vedar shazacha balka wan buspache. Aile this online meetings and conference korun eka meka kmerpache. Kar bore this te karzan durga nastana eka meka kmerpache. Ata Susik Melta Damlaruts button block Kurpache. De Podir Gele Ante Ude Gele Korem. Pun like, share, and subscribe Chasansarant Jivit Zala Dante. Antacha Tempar Nuin Sunde Pun biscuits, samosa, sausages, and oats bin laktad bore. Adle Atsar and Pornil Sali Riti Sudarop and Bodlop Samazache. Oile Vavru Ya Kurunk Bornok Amcha Zor Eklia Jivitache. Sodans Paul Marfune Udor Kuticha Markar Shrishti Tso Ekuts Kaito Dor Eke Godir Bodolta Rup Sonsarache Tache Wangra Ami Bodlop Gurchechem Ani Ots Kaido Amcha Faidiatso Diobare Kuri. So next we have is just to bring a smile on our all faces, we have Muskan Doshi. Hello everyone, I'm Muskan Doshi from Shada Mandir School. So as an art student, I kept wondering what were the sources of my artistic experience in life, what orchestrated my thoughts and my opinions till where I've come to now. Until I realized all of this has just been a part of the play that my, few, my past self, my younger self created for me. And that all stems from the books I've read. Thus, I present to you, she was a library, like water crafted by our teardrops, like food crafted by our hands, like our minds crafted by society. She was crafted by her library. A library crafted by the single hopes of humans to live through all the lives they wish to with it written in a book. But greed is an old friend. Thus appeared the library. She was a library with each new day being a new book with many different stories to witness, her wounds being the near deaths in the books. She left everyone in wonder. What is a library made of? a secret book to happiness or poetic expression to life. But each book has a page, one side being happy flowers and sunshine, the other portraying a bloodshed farm. Is there no such book in her library? 
Her smile started building, her book started collecting dust, pages turning the knowing shade of yellow with experience. She couldn't be a forgotten story, could she? Till one day, there was a storm, which shook her library and the books inside of all the dust. The words fell clear now, a pile of books in the corner more visible now. We searched through the pile of, for the reason for her new released book, till we reached the bottom and collectively kept our distance. A book that was stained with tears, pages ripped off. The book was the odd one in the library. Her haven was tainted by a book not written by her. A book that contains someone else's words. The words being completely opposite to hers must have shattered her, must have stained her imagination. Her library wasn't her anymore. It was stacked with her words masked with someone else's experience. Her books were black daisies grown in the neighbor's garden but spread its venom in hers. Her library was now filled with pages written for her, with words trained to make her feel, trained to make her cry. Her library was a place in someone's sinful mind. Till he grabbed her hand and led her home. For this was just a book, and her books couldn't compare, he explained. Books are evidences of what one chooses to go through, not a compulsion pain for all to grow through. He showed her the effect of her words in the lives of many, her library, after all, was the haven for many. Her library was closed now for a personal holiday, would be open soon with new stacks of vanilla-scented experience. Thank you. Thank you, Muskan. Your words actually filled the soul of the library, which is just there a few meters away. The soul of the, that library was actually pleased. Thank you very much. The next we have is Zubeda Sayyid. Please have a big round of applause. Hello, everyone. So, the name of our poem is Lakshman Rekha. Eyelids open, bouts of cries, with a glance at the child of the bird flies. Surrounded by strangers, she takes in the scene. Engulfed in the mother's arms, she bonds with her queen. Entering girlhood, like the dandelion she blooms, weaving relations and beautifying all rooms. It's seven, don't step out, her parents say. There are Ravanas out there, waiting for their prey. She's an adult now, lively and beautiful, skilled in self-defense, but nonetheless fearful. She covers herself from top to bottom, afraid of being stripped by the wind, just like the trees in autumn. Dutiful, submissive, gentle and meek, she is a wife now, she does not speak. The broom and utensils adorn her crown. In the ocean of traditions, she starts to drown. Why me? She often wonders. Cause you do not fight back, her inner soul thunders. Pen is the only weapon she realizes she holds. Shattering the Lakshman Rekha, she fights for her goals. She is thus the resurrected heroine of her tale. The four walls that she sees now are neither lifeless nor pale. She is as vigorous as an eagle in the sky, spreading her royal wings higher and higher she flies. Thank you. Thank you, Zubeda. I don't know about the Lakshman Rekha, but your words actually cross the Lakshman Rekha. Very good. The words are very beautiful. The next we have is Shanukra Kumar. Hello everyone. Today I'll be uh, uh, reciting a poem about my everyday journey and the thing I love the most that is bus. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so a chaotic bus journey. As the morning sun meets my dusky eyes, I glimpse at a clear view of cerulean sky. In the chaos of life, the fresh story begins when I enter the awaited blue bus again. Seats witness laughter, witness tears, echoes of joys and unspoken fears. A shared space yet worlds apart, each awakening a different path. Amidst the chaos, strangers' eyes meet, a sudden sunshine flashes in city's heartbeat. Unspoken words and shared hum, a short glance and love had begun. Shatter resumes with non-stop tales. New narrative rejoins with crossing rails. 
a theater with shared confines and stories of deadlines, never fails to gather tales and for interwoven chains. At Terminus, the journey finds its close, wheels sighing softly as the engine goes, as bus pause a farewell embrace, and I leave behind the chaotic trees. Thank you, Shanugra, for these beautiful words. The poems were, we have done in English, Konkhni, Marathi. Hindi wale humse kuch naraz hai. Hindi wale aapke liye ek Hindi kavita leke aari hai Deepa, Deepa Gosavi. Zor dar taliya se swagat ki jiye. my poem is in Hindi so I am not going to give you a spoilers what my poem is about so let me decide the name of my poem is Is Yug Ki Draupadi Wo Thi Panchal Ki Kanya Wo Thi Panchal Ki Kanya Pandavo Ki Bhariya Iske Karan Kauron Ka Vidvan Shua Uska Janma Bana Karan Itihaas Ke Padne Badalne Ko उसका जन्म हुआ कारण इतिहास के पन्ने बदलने को जिसके आज भी दी जाते हैं मिसाल इस दुनिया को जिसके कारण उसने अपने बहुत सारे अपनों को खोया कौरों से हैवान आज भी है इस धरती पर कौरों से हैवान आज भी है इस धरती पर जो करते हैं अब भी द्रौपदी का वस्त्र है मानते हैं उसे भोग बिलास के प्रति पर तुम मत भूल इतिहास गवाह है द्रौपदी ने दुशासन के रक्त से केस सवारे हैं उसकी इच्छा के विरुद्ध उसे दाव पर लगाया उसके इच्छा के विरुद्ध उसे दाव पर लगाया उसके विद्रोह तक को ना किसी ने देखा क्या अभी ये दुनिया स्त्री होने पर मजबूर करती है और मर्द को सिंहासन पर बिठाती है पैरों तले स्त्री को मसल देना क्या सही है या उसके सपनों को दबा देना गलत चारों ओर से गिरी हुई है द्रौपदी ना तो तब वह शाही महल में महफूज थी ना अब घर में ना तब साड़ी में ना अब जींस में तब तो सहारा बन उसके अपनों ने उसे इंसाफ दिलाया अब वही उसका गला घोटने पे तुले हुए हैं जो वक्त बेक वक्त उसे अपने नजरों से गिरा रहे हैं कुछ बोलना चाहा तो उसका मुंह दबा दिया कुछ कहना चाहा तो समाज का धब्बा लगा दिया बहुत हुआ द्रौपदी बहुत हुआ द्रौपदी गुट गुट के जीना तोड़ दे उन जंजीरों को खोल दे उन बेड़ियों को जो समाज के नाम पर तूने आज तक बांध रखी थी अब तु, अब तुझे तेरा सहारा बनना पड़ेगा अपने वजूद को फिर से पाना पड़ेगा ना तो तेरे पांडव आएंगे ना तो तेरे अपने वो भूखे प्यासे है वार भूल गए हैं तेरी ताकत को उन्हें अनिवार्य है याद दिलाना तेरी शक्ति को उन्हें अनिवार्य है याद दिलान तेनी शक्ति को धन्यवाद बहुत ही खूब दीपा आपके शब्द सुनकर कई द्रौपदी की भी आत्मा तृप्त हुई होगी अब तक सो नेक्स्ट वी हैव इज लॉरल डिसोजा गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन इन द नेम ऑफ माई पोएम इज लवर्स बे By the lover's bay I stood and watched every single wave your name an echo in my head ties changed became new but i'm still here waiting for you throngs of lovers hand in hand exchanging stories whispering plans who will tell our story i wonder the one that never really began they ask and ask i laugh and answer say i never did want hands to hold or kids to scold maybe it's true or maybe the only thing i wanted was you by the lovers bay i still stand guarding intertwined names written on sand you lived loved had a blissful life but i am still here long after i quit being alive thank you Thank you, Laura. I don't know about the lovers, but I surely fell in love with your poem. So next we have is Urvi Gotki. Please clap. Uh, good. 
गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन माई नेम इज उदी सो आई हैव अ स्मॉल टेस्ट विच यू आर कैन डू टू नो इफ यू आर अ पोएट ओके सो इफ यू आर वेन एवर यू आर एक्सट्रीमली सैड और एक्सट्रीमली हैप्पी और यू आर फीलिंग वेरी लो एंड इफ द फर्स्ट थाट विच यू हैव इवन बिफोर वाइपिंग योर टीयर्स इज दैट वेट बट वेट आई हैव सम लाइन्स फॉर्मिंग इन माई माइंड बट वेट लेट मी फाइंड अ पेन एंड अ पीस ऑफ पेपर देन यू नो दैट यू आर डेफिनेटली अ पोएट एट हार्ट Okay, so I wrote this poem after a very long writer's block uh, and a mature writer's block. Uh, and yet the Shakespeare and Frost in me did not take a step back. I tried to rhyme it after a long time. A B A B rhyme scheme, ma'am. So, <laughs> so here it is. It's called the Leap of Hope. Alone with a million thoughts, scrambled feelings, neurons frozen in ice. sitting and lying with blood and clots waiting for someone to just roll the dice was it always so comfortingly dark or did the sun never rise was the heart always in search for a spark to burn the tears that the heart cries rivers frozen and parched farms were they demeaning voices cruelly existent the corner of the room had opened it, its arms the darkness comfortingly didn't seem so distant Finally she took the last leap of hope blindly dived into the dead sea forgot about her legs being tied to an unrealistic rope made her last unsuccessful attempt to be set blissfully free thank you thank you ruby after your poem even my tears have gone dry thank you very much so next <laughs> So next we have is Vaibhavi Apte. Good afternoon, everyone. The name of my poem is Cascading Dreams. In twilight's tender silken gleam, where style where starlight weaves its subtle stream, a tapestry of hopes and schemes unfolds in cascading dreams. Each drop of night, a wish anew. in moonlight's gentle silver hue they dance like leaves in summer breeze these cascading dreams among the trees through slumber's realm we softly soar to places never seen before where endless rivers twist and flow in cascading dreams we freely go and as the dawn begins to break with gentle steps we slowly wake yet memories of that nightly flight in cascading dreams still burn so bright so let us close our eyes once more and to that wondrous realm we'll soar where wishes flow in endless streams in the timeless land of cascading dreams thank you thank you for those beautiful words next we have is navin kumar have a big round of applause navin kumar come on good afternoon one and all Uh, so when uh, ma'am Nafiza told that this event is coming up, I was concentrating to write a poem, but nothing came to my mind because the thought of my past, uh, my love life was disturbing me. So, <laughs> so then I thought I'll write about it. So my uh, the name of my poem is uh, Love Shattered. Teenage is the time we fall in love. How dare you call it attraction? I was I was 17 and she was 15. My mom landed in aggravation. She tore us apart, broke our hearts, shattered our dreams like any fragile glass. Mom said, "Run behind money, run behind marks. Don't you talk about that stupid lass." We shed some tears and fell apart. The feelings for my girl are still in my heart. <laughs> she soon became someone's bride. and now and now she has a cute little child i am the fool who lost my love unworthy are grades and priceless is love dear teenagers lose not your love to hell with grades go listen to your hearts dear youngsters forget not your lovers to hell with phd's run behind your hearts thank you
नवीन आई कुल एक्चुअली सी डी थ्रो सो नेक्स्ट वी हैव इज सो नेक्स्ट वी सो या अब अगली कविता भी हिंदी में है मैं बुलाना चाहूंगा सिमरन जादव को जोरदार ताली से स्वागत कीजिए Because this is something sad. <laughs> okay, not exactly sad, but uh, you will get to a realization point after hearing this. The name of my poem is Rishte. रिश्तों को समझने के लिए खुद को समझाना पड़ता है. ये कैसे रिश्ते हैं जनाब जहाँ खुद को गिराना पड़ता है? रिश्तों को बचाने के लिए खुद को डराना पड़ता है. ये कैसे रिश्ते हैं जनाब जहाँ खुद को छुपाना पड़ता है रिश्तों को रिझाने के लिए खुद को भुलाना पड़ता है ये कैसे रिश्ते हैं जनाब जहाँ खुद को जलाना पड़ता है रिश्तों को निभाने के लिए खुद को झुकाना पड़ता है ये कैसे रिश्ते हैं जनाब जहाँ खुद को मिटाना पड़ता है बहुत ही कविता सिमरन बहुत खुश नसीब होंगे ओपन में जहाँ पर ये सो नेक्स्ट इज वृथा करमली हेलो एवरीबॉडी द टाइटल ऑफ माय पोएम इज वांटेड मेमोरीज व्हाई डज गोइंग टू बेड फील्स लाइक अ टास्क स्पेशली व्हेन स्लीप सीम्स माइल्स अबाउट अ लाइटनिंग स्ट्रीक of all the possible embarrassing memories flash across my blank eyes the oldest of the oldest memories make an appearance during the dark night the forgotten memories come back alive from the distant graveyard i wonder why did i say that a million years ago why did i say something when the opportunity was right the discomfort grows as i keep changing the sides the river of overthinking keeps flowing in my mind As the night grows deeper, fortunately, the memories become blurry and slowly fade away. The internal screaming subsides, sleep takes over, and the eyes turn blank again. The memories get shoved away with the rising sun, a new day, a new beginning. But the beginning comes to an end as it approaches the silent night. The cycle continues, and the unwanted memories reappear to make their presence felt in my sight. Thank you. What a wonderful poem, Ruta. The next is <laughs> Isha Palkar. Good evening, good evening, everyone. My name is Isha Palkar, and my poem is titled as "An Unsung Misery." It's getting difficult to hold a pen as I string my wandering thoughts together. This void has always been an empty den, for the lioness was put to sleep by folks' ugly chatter. I like sunsets, I say. Too cliche, they immediately revert. Fall in love with the moon, they say. My choices, they easily convert. My desires of dreaming, climbing mountains, running into forests, stumbling on four-leaf clover, facing the heights of trees, drinking water from fountains, are all set drowning in their selfish river. I am fond of the night sky filled with stardust. It narrates an untold tale of victory, nature's victory over society's everlasting lust. A dreamy yet unfortunate lie, a misery turned into mystery. I see my reflection in nature's sad shadow, overpowered by these bunch of crooks. This silence has made both of us shallow. Their devastating mindset has poisoned our roots. Stop dreaming you are no 5 year old be a lady learn how to do laundry and to cook be empathetic be beautiful not fierce not bold constant manifestations of the words i wish to overlook in the middle of something i can't escape i try to fit in to be accepted to be sung my glory seems caged in this absurd townscape 
in their world with only stereotypes distributed among. I chose to break through, connect with the sun, the northern star, for the stars only shine when they're set against the darkest night. Or maybe because my body comprises of the same atoms by far. Perhaps a reason why I look for answers from this guiding light. Thank you. What an inspiring poetry. The next is Hannah Kittel. Please have a big round of applause. I'll present a poem which I had written like last night, <laughs> just because I wanted to present something. So uh, it does not have a name yet. Uh, in a lush green garden, you were once so green, adorned with foliage, a serene scene. But as the rain came to an end, your vibrant hue did fade, leaving you bare in a soundless glade. In the garden of life, we start so fresh and green, adorned with ambitions and full of energy. But as time unfolds, the rain of years will cease, leaving us with wisdom and inner peace. Though the greens have gone, your spirit remains a symbol of life's cycle and its endless refrains. Though our youth may fade, our spirits soar and gain, a symbol of growth as we weather joy and pain. The poem which was written just last night doesn't seem like it was just written just last night. Yeah, so next we have is Sienna Fernandez. Hi everyone, so today I'll be reciting on the poem that is about war and the name of it is Do We Need a War? Being actors in this journey of life, one ego destroys its happy vibes. Why do, why do we underestimate its replications? Use of war to fulfill one's satisfaction? Why should there be bloodshed and death? Why should mothers, children and families keep crying, seeing bodies bombarded to pieces? Why should soldiers plead for peace? Why bombs, war and missile threats? Why is intelligence leading to innocent deaths? Why can't they see people's tears? Why do people flee with fear? Who is to be blamed? The innocent child or the devilish mind? Who is to be blamed? The innocent child or the devilish mind? Why peace can't be the weapon? Please, no war, my plea to everyone. Why peace can't be the weapon? Please, no war, my plea to everyone. Thank you. What a wonderful poetry, Sienna. The next is Pearl Sequeira. Hi, everyone. So the poem that I'm about to recite is a contrast of how uh, a bird is uh, locked up in a cage and how as teens sometimes we feel locked up in a cage. Uh, an imprisoned cry. I am caged in a tiny world. My wings feel so worthless. A burden like something I couldn't do. I want to explore the world, but I get scared of the demons outside too. For fear rushes and I feel helpless, not knowing which way should I go. Life gives you one chance, they say. So hustle up and get your way through. I think and rethink of what to do, but finally decide to just live my life through. A caged bird is all that I am whose desire is to be who I am. Thank you. A wonderful poem. And next, Pirik Bhar, aapke samne prasthu pane jari hai Hindi kavita. Bulana chahunga Preja Pandari ko. Zorda Tali se swagat ki ji. Mere kavita ka topic hai ये दुनिया हमें पता है कि हमारे जीवन ऐसे हैं जहाँ पर हमें कई बार समझौता करना पड़ता है कॉम्प्रोमाइज करना पड़ता है तो उसी पर हमारी दुनिया पर ही आधारित ये कविता है 
नस का फूट जाने तक का सब्र करना हमारी दुनिया तोड़ने वाला का, वाले का साथ निभाना जहरीले काटो वो भी समझो ना क्या ये जरूरी होता है खोखले रिश्तों को प्यार से भरना बंजर जमीन पर पानी बरसाना दूसरों के सुख के लिए खुद का खात्मा करना क्या ये जरूरी होता है हाँ या नहीं यह अपना मत होता है समय अपना रुख बदलता है पराया अपना भी हो जाता है पर यही सत्य ना होता है अपना भी पराया होता है जो टोकर जिसके लिए खाता है वो उल्टा उसी को ठुकराता है ये सच थोड़ा कड़वा है पर सब ने यह जाना है है ना क्यों ऐसा ये जग होता है प्यार का शब्द उन्हें ना भाता है पर फसाना अच्छी तरह से आता है तभी प्यार के मुंह के बल तभी प्यार में मुंह के बल गिरता है देखो कैसा व्यक्ति है वो फिर से धोखा खाता है काश कोई लम्हा वो उधार ले पाता टूटने से पहले ही खुद को सवार पाता फिर कभी ना वो डरता है ये उसके बाद की जिंदगी है जब उसको लाइफ के बारे में पता चलता है वो मुँह हो जाता है और समाज को फेस करता है फिर भी ना वो डरता है फिर कभी ना रिश्ता रिश्तों के माये में माया में फंसता है सच्चे रिश्तों को संजोता है अपने पैरों पर फिर से खड़ा हो जाता है खुद का साया बनता है तूफानों से जूझता है खुद के अस्तित्व के लिए जीता है खुद के आत्मसम्मान के लिए लड़ता है जो भीड़ में भी रहकर खुद के लिए अकेला लड़ता है खुद के लिए अकेला लड़ता है धन्यवाद बहुत ही खूबसूरत कविता थी ऐसी ही और कविताएं सुनने के लिए कुछ पल उधार लेना जरूर चाहूंगा सो नेक्स्ट बिफोर वी मूव नेक्स्ट लॉरिन हैज एन अनाउंसमेंट फॉर यू ऑल ओके डॉक्टर फेडिंग नोरोना हैज ब्रॉट इन कॉपीज ऑफ एंटोनियो गोम्सस पोएट्री कलेक्शन आई थिंक ही हैज कैप्टन नियर द ट्री देयर सो इफ एनीबॉडी वांट्स यू गाइस कैन टेक इट आल्सो व्हेन द स्नैक्स आर गिवन ओवर प्लीज सी टू इट दैट यू गाइस डोंट लिटर अराउंड देयर आर लाइक गार्बेज बिन्स कैप्ट अराउंड द प्लेस सो Throw your waste in the garbage bins. Thank you. Next we have is Chelsea Azevedo, along with the snacks. Do enjoy the poem as well. <laughs> Thanks for that, Sai. Okay, so hi, I'm Chelsea. So around two years ago, I adopted a cat. and i am not exaggerating when i say that my life has dramatically changed ever since in a good way because a couple of months ago yeah because a couple of months ago i adopted another cat <laughs> so here is an introduction to lin and coco so lin is a very clever cat he climbed up the stairs and plop he sat enjoying the cool and soothing tile will look up at you with a lazy smile Lin relishes nothing more than a big smelly fish. He doesn't like being put on a leash. Struts around with poise and grace. However, will be afraid of a mere shoe lace. There are moments where he likes to cuddle, zoom around the house and overcome huddles. But those moments are very precious and rare because he's a diva who needs the utmost care. Then we have little Coco, the biggest bane of Lin's existence. My dad often says, "Coco, tu es loco," which is proven every time he's being a nuisance. Coco is very much an elegant tuxedo, and yet he'd never be invited to the White House. With that one brain cell, he can easily let go a humiliating encounter he once had with a mouse. It was a humid and stormy night when Coco, the kitten, spotted a big furry mice. I was ready to witness a fight instead had to see Coco run for his life <laughs> while Lin is rather collected and calm I'm certain Coco crawled out from hell and although I have no qualms 
pretty sure Lin's soon gonna rebel. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. After a poem, even I am tempted to adopt one cat. Yeah. Next we have is Achal Kurgaukar. Achal Kurgaukar is from Sharda Mandir School. Please note. The name of my poem is Caged Freedom. This may seem like an open-ended poem, but when I wrote it, I wrote it from the perspective of a woman who never got the justice she deserved. So here it is. Gentle I may seem, candidly to sight with a dove's innocence. My knowledge of truth and wound that which you refuse to see. And my note of a sparrow, word of a swan. Yet my spirit is trapped in a cage, a cage of cold metal that burns in the sun and folds my wide wings which cover my eyes, those which know the truth, truth which my jailer would never reveal to me otherwise. Be it not for my stubborn desire to ask a question, to sing my mind. For years I've been tied to these heavy weights of iron, slowing me down but never dare stopping, from seeking that blind justice which, if ever, did exist. They allow some dissent, some rebellion, curbed only till it suits them. For when was pure justice free, if not ever caged? Like a gift, I was presented with freedom. Freedom that promised happiness, but only later did I realize it was a compromise they had to make for their own wishes. Years of happiness, looking back now, were wasted on yours. Slavery was long since abolished, then what am I a slave for? I was lied to. Freedom, it seems so, isn't just at hand. It's at the far end of a cliff, way above dreamland. We're in the 21st century, an age of modern times, an age of change, an age of empowerment, but still an age of injustice, an age of torment. What would you know of my plight? You sat back and shouted orders. You were scared, scared I'd rise above you, scared I would overthrow you. If you were so powerful, why was your spine so weak? You were a coward, a selfish monster with a child's mind that I, with my powerful will, tamed as far as I could. Is it too difficult to understand or too low to accept? Which of the two, or neither, perhaps ignorance or greed would better apply? But would it make things better? Freedom, freedom, when will I greet? It's on my doorstep with 20 doors in between. Freedom, freedom, why are you trapped? Any kind of cage you weren't meant to have, you weren't meant to have. Thank you. Thank you, Achal, for the beautiful words. Next we have is Venisha Dabolkar. Hello, everyone. The name of my poem is Blossom Your Life. Build your life like a sweet home. Let your love be the fragrance of your soul. Plant people more and more. Give your best to serve the household. Work hard to set each brick indestructible. Keep calm and think of making it bigger. Don't shatter by someone's bulletless trigger. Overcome your sorrow and say it loud, you are able. Paint your home with dashing colors. One day, melody of your fortunate heart will be sung by you along with others. Let your base be strong and never defame anyone. Let your success make some noise. Encourage yourself to always be poised. And don't ever forget those who made you their first choice. Thank you. Thank you, Venisha. Well, I'm not sure about success, but your poetry has made a loud noise. So next we have is Lisa Fernandez. Hello, everybody. My poem is titled So Blind. Categorization begins when a child is born. If it's a boy, it's a pride to prepare sweet dish and serve to all. But if it's a girl, she's regarded neither a curse nor a blessing at all. Then comes the stereotypes. Girls are, be to, girls are to be dressed in pink and boys in blue. There's separation in the type of toys they need to play with too. And all this gives them gender clues. The portion of food served is done in justice too. If he eats extra, he'll be sweating it out for good. And what will she do? After all, she needs to be in the house. And her obesity will turn out to be laziness. And then she'll be of no good. Stop her. Education may make her think rationally. 
give her a reasoning power and a right to raise up questions too. Let him pursue his. He'll make the family wealthier with goods and everyone will be so pleased. She's thought that her complexion describes her status. If she's fair, she belongs to nobility. And if she's dark, she seems to be living in complete poverty. She's thought how to cook, clean, dress, and at times how to dress too. Now, for God's sake, why don't you even show her how to breathe? And I'm sure soon it will turn out to be true. He goes clubbing, but her curfew begins at 7. If not, it is believed that her behavior won't be worthy to grant her an abode in heaven. She goes out for work, yet comes home and continues. As domestic work is not what men are supposed to do. Poor she, the family of her blood didn't spare her for a bit. I bet she's treated in her marital house as spit. First she was dependent on her father, then her brother, later her spouse, and now her son. Because you tell me, what on earth have women won? And all this continues, her rights are never kept in mind. Because when it comes to gender equality in this patriarchal society, we are all so blind. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for raising your voice against the patriarchal norms. <laughs> so next we have is a Persian poem by Rahula Niazi. Please, a big round of applause. Rahula Niazi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, one and all. Uh, I am Rahula Niazi from student of MBA at GBS. I am from Afghanistan and I come from the uh, territory of a Persian. Hmm? I belong to the Persian literature, one of the richest and the oldest literature of the world. Uh, the poem which I am going to recite for you is about unconditional love. The speaker expresses his happiness with a painful tone when he realizes the happiness of his beloved with someone else. He says, love is not always reaching to each other. Sometimes it means letting go. Asama kuzami, ye zaruri nahi, jamili, ishq sacha vahi, jisko milti nahi, manzili. I'm sure for most of you, it will be the first time you listen to uh, Persian poem, I hope you like it. Hamin ke hali tu khub ast, hali man khub ast. Hamin ke hali tu khub ast, hali man khub ast. Havaay shahr dili, khush khayali man khub ast. Hamin ke az tu khabar mi rasat ke khush khali, hamin ke sada shudi bi khayali man khub ast. گذاشتی که بمیرد فلنگ زخمی تو به درد دوری چشمت غزال من خوب است همیشه رفتن من تا تو نارسیدن داشت همیشه رفتن من تا تو نارسیدن داشت اگرچه آخری هر قهوه فال من خوب است پس از تو شوقی فریدن اگر نمیگیرم دلم گرفته فقط ورنه بال من خوب است تمام شادی دنیا گلم از آن تو با تمام درد سرت باد مال من خوب است چه فرق دارد اگر لاغر و شکسته شدم چه فرق دارد اگر لاغر و شکسته شدم همین که حال تو خوب است حال من خوب است Thank you so much I hope you like it Thank you, Rahula. Though the language was very unknown, the words were very much, yeah, heart touching. It pierced through the heart. <laughs> Thank you, man. The next is Swastik Namshekar. about war and I couldn't come up with any title so it's named as war. <laughs> you walk through a garden of white lilies, serene, alluring, delightful, yet ephemeral. Far away you hear fireworks. You look up, red, orange, grey, blending with blue, appalled, 
you run towards your home only to meet with debris of your world like millions vengeance become becomes your oxygen you are inhaled by violence and make better feel your home find solace in destruction you call it living you have become autumn leaves hanging there between surviving and dying you are living corpses eyes devoid of emotions heart filled with void you walk through lifeless bodies of your friends enemies victims innocents storms and sorrow engulf you and trembling you whisper is war necessary and there is someone weeping in the backyard of yours it is a soul of war wailing dreading for the lost life thank you thank you so much swastik next we have is bhavani rabina Hello everyone my name is Pawani my poem titled is i wish you dream she loves him more than he thinks she admires you in her prayer you are her first wish sometimes she doesn't accept much but only hope for some love from your side too there is no replacement for you sometimes home is a person and for her it's you idiot you are the glow of her face i don't know but the connection which she share with you is the most precious for her you will be always her favorite person the one who calms her soul and fills her heart with warmth you are blessing for her all she need is your presence when you are beside her she can conquer the world if you choose to stay i promise to never leave You are not part of her life, but you are her entire world. You are the gulab jamun of her thali. You are the piece of puzzle without which the picture is incomplete. For her, love is happiness, which she get from you. I wish you knew what I feel about you. I wish. I wish. Thank you. That was really wonderful poem. Uh, This is an announcement. The uh, Sagar Pujari from International Masters Degree in Business Administration. Sagar Pujari is here. No. Okay. So we're moving to the next. Next is Ashmika Fadesai. Um, hi everyone. So the name, the name of my poem is Unrivaled Thoughts. Amidst the rushing streams and cotton shrouded sky, I see a little bay. It has bordered its pigments from the happier sky, the one showcasing its seven colors in a beautiful smile. I see with undivided pupils. It's a butterfly. My eyes watching it. Um, it's not on the flower anymore. It's lost. Oh wait, I see it, drowning in the gushing stream. The water is in seven colors, just like my thoughts. my thoughts of different colors flowing in my mind the little being is me myself myriad of thoughts of all different making me drown the butterfly cannot swim nor can i it flies so will i so will i thank you thank you so much ashmika next before i announce this i will just like to greet you all saying bonjour Why did I say bonjour because the next poem is in French I call upon Elaine Bone Elaine is here Merci beaucoup Ah ma gir Hi um so my poem is in french and it's called j'ai voulu chausser des semelles et des vents mais ce n'était pas ma peinture 
Mon état m'a conduit vers la ville en premier. Broua, féerique, continue des cités. Je voulais me fondre dans la masse, me mettre au parfum comme ma glace. Le ciel est bleu et je jouerai même la nuit. Je vagabondais sur les vagues abondantes des milles pavés et je cherchais encore le sens de la visite en sortant du musée. L'incertitude à la barre, je sentais tomber la, pointer la tempête. Je me perdais parfois au fil de mes errances incomplètes. Je contournais les belles Vénus. Je survolais Mars, Uranus. Et tard le soir, j'évitais les Jupiter. Ils aimaient les jupes à terre. Porte à porte, face à face, tour à tour, pas à pas. Comme Saturne, Saturne et Saturne me passaient l'anneau au doigt. Le ciel est vieux et le jour est les mêmes m'ennuie. Le bouquet des visages se fanait sous mes yeux. Comme je me lassais vite de la ville et des lieux, le silence assourdissant de la solitude me manquait comme tous les mots tu, et tu me manquais. D'ailleurs, le ciel est mieux, et je sais bien que le jour me nuit. Oui, mais sans crier gare, je repartais à pied, attiré par la lune, tout comme la marée, et enfant de Neptune, enfant déboussolé, enfant debout, salé comme le ciel de la ville aux mille minarets, je contemplais la voie lactée. La plénitude me murmurait des chansons de Théodore Monod contre un petit peu de Monod. Et la solution était juste au bout de mon nez, mais je jouais au sphinx et je l'avais perdu. La voie lactée posait un voile sur l'infini du soir. Je voudrais parfois prendre un instant dans mes bras et le consoler. Le ciel est creux et parfois rabat joie et parfois parapluie. Je veux continuer. Je veux tout voir, tout croire. Je veux apprendre et créer, escalader le monde à l'horizontale. Je veux survoler les mers, les monts et toutes les plaines austères et tout le Panthéon. Je veux chevaucher le dos de Carib ou Silla et peut-être chuter, un dos, un ci, un là, un pacte dissonant et sourire harmonique. Le ciel est bleu. Au final, le jour est inouï. Je veux finir ce voyage sur une falaise comme je l'ai commencé. Funambule vacillante, bourrasques assaillantes. Je traverserai le temps jusqu'à perdre haleine et raison, quitte à finir encore plus pauvre que mes rimes. Au pire, Hermès me prêtera ses godasses. Thank you. Well, again, I couldn't understand French, but the only thing I love in French is saying bonjour. So, <laughs> So yeah, the poem was wonderful. Thank you very much. And next we have is Pragati Desai. Please clap. Okay. Uh, so the name of my poem is Three. Upholding the domicile, a place where she belongs, keeping it all sacred without hurting social norms. Deep ties her own secret desire, Weaving a tale that might be a myth, a tale of a luxurious life to prove her doubtful mind, a thirst to make her parents live a comfy life, a dream every girl thinks to make her pillars witness. The hidden emotions of a father, the overwhelming love of a mother, woman keeping up with her own family and the desire she has for her parents. Will she ever fly high? Living apart all chaos, she has in her tiny world. Will her parents enjoy her presence, a daughter who now stays far away, busy fighting her own wars? Why not? Women have to come out of their cocoons, open her eyes and step out. Not a usual move, but a move to create. Create and weave the plight with her own desire. Not skipping one step, but managing every step. It's you, it's your heart. Take a turn, gear your car, drive, drive out with your wishes. Let your parents know you are and you will always be there. And see the shimmering eyes that will give you peace for life. Thank you. Thank you, Pragati, for the beautiful poem. And next we have is Priyanka Barreto. Hi everyone, I'm Priyanka and uh, my poem is titled as uh, Brave Bold Battlers. 
in every solitary person there lies a warrior facing troubles with every fading season prompting us to mold ourselves for a credible reason circumstances make us resolute after a gloomy day does the shimmery sun commute even a rough terrain will be weathered to a productive plane so stop flooding salty tears on the window pane we are bra brave bold battlers struggling for survival here on earth life is a war one needs to inflame the warrior within and fight like a lion's paw we wrestle each day making worth our existence feeling hopeless and lost nevertheless we are dare devils not giving up by dismantling our veins not entangling ropes around our sensitive necks oh that pains grappling our existence as toddlers and at wrinkles scruffling and brawling is task we are mighty warriors wrestling at every little path things age and obstacles change remember worries are just a phase you don't shut them up in a sorrowful cage because they too have got no permanency to stay life's a journey messed up and hard but we are battlers who grow and never give up i know it's hard to be a chaotic thinker but know that nothing's here to stay and trouble forever thank you thank you so much priyanka and next we have is jay fernandez hello everyone it feels great to be back uh, a little context for my poem so back in february i attended this workshop at pilar and during this workshop we had to sit opposite a stranger and look into their eyes for what felt like at least 15 minutes yeah it was funny it was awkward embarrassing everything and there was gentle music in the background and after these 15 minutes we had to write a poem based on this experience so presenting before you my poem titled i see I see eyes that see eyes. I see eyes and wonder what they have seen and what they are yet to see. Have you seen eyes opening for the first time and closing for the last time? Have you seen eyes that looked interested but then blinked and looked away? Have you seen eyes that saw what you see? Have you seen eyes that failed to see what you saw? Have you seen what I am yet to see? I see wrinkles, I see exhaustion. I see love and the lack of it. I see time and dust in and around your eyes. You can blink and blink again. I'll still stare into your eyes and wonder the music rises the music falls you have fallen and gotten up so many times you have closed and opened your eyes so many times i see a dynasty faith fun festivals funerals frustration what have you not seen you continue with it all without it all despite it all liking what you have loving what you don't i wish i had what you had but then i'd have your problems too you could have been born without the ability to see here you are seeing observing understanding making sense of the world even when it does not seem to make any sense you giggle i giggle you blink i blink now tell me what do you see thank you thank you jude i guess the saying that the eyes are the windows into the soul really the soul value 
Um, is Sagar Pujari around? Just another call for him. Is he not? Okay. So if any of you guys thought that you would never hear this next poet speak words that would move your heart, you are wrong because now we have Sai Patel. Yeah, so my poem is Life and Death. So please get serious. Yeah. I come always, not every day. You stay behind closed doors or hide yourself anywhere. I will surely meet you, no matter how long you stay away. No matter how long you avoid, I am bound to you, you are bound to me. I will encounter you one day for sure, no matter wherever you will be. Oh yes, I am the death speaking. The day I meet you, you will die. All hate me because I am a bitter truth and life is always a sweet lie. It's a very short poem, thank you. Before I exit, three important announcements. The first is, uh, make sure you have uh, collected the book by Antonio Goves if you have not. Second is, uh, if you all have uh, taken, uh, collect your certificates without fail. And third, most important announcement is, make sure you all have had your snacks. Thank you very much. Okay, so the title of my poem is Can the Dead Really Live Again? I dream of you in vivid colors, happy moments, fleeting minutes that pass on all too soon. You're long gone. I don't hold out hope of ever seeing you again. Is it a selfish to be thankful? <coughs> Not aging into childhood? Try to stay a little while longer, but this scary whirlpool is now at rest. I dream of you in color. It's hard not to. I'm not trying to. You yell at me disappointed. I'm nothing like you, and I'm nothing like me. You're alive in my dreams, blood pumping the way it's supposed to, eyes vibrant, that's how they should be. You're smiling. It's been a while since I've seen those gleams. I dream of you in black and white. We were laughing at the moon, mystical beings spot on the phone, our feet meeting deserted streets, that was our paradise. Can the dead really live again? We force them alive in pictures and memories and flashbacks and regrets. That's how they'd want it. We tell ourselves over and over again. We mourn in silence and grieve out loud. Last breaths and missed goodbyes. We share our happy moments, our sad ones too. We cling to hope of reunion and heaven. We lull ourselves with prayers for their souls, ours too. Can the, dead, can the dead really live again? Not in an imagined paradise or multicolored memories, in broken hearts and disbelief and denial. A death is a loss, a crushing blow to the living. It killed me on the day you left and still stabs me when I dream of you in vivid colors. We now have Jonas Rodrix who will also be reciting a poem. Okay, hi. Now, Naveen really gave a heart-wrenching <laughs> poem, didn't he? But don't worry, Naveen, this, you can use this late for your next relationship. <laughs> or for anyone out here who feels a bit romantic. Alright? I titled this poem, Unrequited Feelings, and this was something I had written, I think, a couple of years ago when I had nothing much to think about. So, here goes. Another day just fades away. I see her walk past my driveway, hoping I have the courage to say, care for a coffee someday. We usually make small talk and occasionally take that long walk. You remain oblivious as if to mock the feelings I have for you in stock. To try my very best to make you say yes and fulfill this amazing quest of true love full of zest. You bring new life and energy to every single day and activity with a cheerful and bright personality enhancing your elegance and beauty. You love to pursue your hobbies. You try not to make enemies. You fulfill all your responsibilities. A stanza or two cannot measure your amazing qualities. The face that radiates a glow shining brighter than pearls deep below. 
Oh love have I said this before, I shall love you forevermore. I will never find someone like you, quick witted, kind and caring too. Your amicable nature, so pure and true, has enchanted me through and through. This is merely a hopeless romantic, with musings humble and meek, trying a form so artistic to express his desire to weak to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Jonas. Sienna Gomes, will you now recite a poem for us, please? So, as you all know, this was an ISA for the creative writing students. Uh, <laughs> so, what happened was we've given almost we were given almost a week's time to write a poem, and I've never been the one to you know who's able to write poems at command or at will. So today, when I woke up in the morning, I, so I was trying to think of something, and nothing came to my mind. Literally nothing. So I decided to write a poem about nothing. <laughs> so here goes nothing. <laughs> Something's been up to nothing of late. Nothing's been up to something down the street. In the void where silence reigns supreme, nothing build a tranquil stream. No glamour, no weather, or magic of role. Yet nothing is where stories are told. Embracing this beauty of nothingness I've found, for in something, I always find myself bound. Nothingness holds a mystery untold being hopeful of the night sky, of some stories to unfold. From nothingness, the universe began, a cosmic dance of intricate plan. In the absence of something, we find our way to understand the essence of night and day. Thank you, Sierno. And now, before any function it may be, it is incomplete without expressing a gratitude, and so, I call upon Ma'am Nafisa to propose the vote of thanks. Good evening to everyone gathered here. Uh, I'm happy to be proposing the vote of thanks to acknowledge the contribution of those whose efforts uh, uh, led to the materialization of this event. I'm grateful to the university authorities, in particular Professor Vagley, Dean of the Shenoy Goyambab School of Languages and Literature for supporting the fifth edition of Pure Poetry. A special thanks to Ms. Purva Naik, the program director for MA English, who has been my go-to person. And I also thank my other colleagues, Runa, Anjali, Professor Nina, Priyanka, Sangeeta, each of whom I have approached with some request or the other, and they have gracefully obliged. I thank our office staff, Tanvi and Manjali, for their cooperation. And I thank uh, Professor Brushali for permitting the use of this uh, PA podium lectern and uh, some of us know the adventure that we were on to find a functioning one uh, and uh, thank you uh, Ganesh for helping with the sound uh, working as a team has facilitated this endeavor to the participants thank you for sharing your compositions with us to the attendees thank you for listening to our well wishes thank you for encouraging students and promoting the reach of this event and finally, to my students, thank you. Not just mine, I, I've learned that others as well have helped. Uh, thank you for being there 24-7 from designing, printing, and writing certificates, purchasing, preparing, uh, and decorating the venue, running errands when required, registering participants, serving refreshments, cleaning the area before and hopefully after <laughs> the event. I truly appreciate every, every effort that you have put into this. Thank you so much. I wouldn't have uh, been able to do this without you. And uh, have a lovely evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>